Dominican Friars in Rwanda. Meditation on the Feast of Dedication of John the Rateran Basilica. In celebrating the dedication of the Basilica of St. John Rateran, the Gospel presents us with Jesus in the midst of cleansing of the Jerusalem Temple. He forcefully drives out the merchants who had transformed the sacred place into a place of commerce and thieves. Having that in mind, we are invited to come out of our contradictions to purify our bodies, which are also the temples of God, and to rediscover the value of the church in our lives, which bring us together and conducting us to God. First of all, the purification of the temple will make sense if our life is also purified, as the gospel suggests. Our bodies are the privileged temples of God. Temple built by human hands lead us there. This gesture of chasing away the mercant with force in the temple shows us how intolerant God would be to live with sin in the heart of his child. From there, we are asked to regularly purify our lives through the sacraments, avoiding all forms of inconsistency with our faith and with all with our promises to God for the good of our neighbors. So in what way are our bodies, our works, and our lives coherent with our Christian faith? What do we need to change? Secondly, the Basilica of St. John Rateran is the Cathedral of Rome and the Pope is its bishop. It is the oldest church and is therefore the mother and the head of all churches. It is one of the four major basilicas. Therefore, celebrating its dedication challenges us to rediscover the value of the church in our Christian life as a sacred place, as a mother who brings us together and leads us to God. So how do our churches bring us together today? What are we doing to make them places of refuge and motherly affection? What is our contribution so that the church can bring God's people together regardless of their origin, social status, etc. Churches physically symbolize God's plan to see us united and gathered under his protection, light, and love. To achieve this, our witness, our sharing with the poor and the hungry, our visits to the sick and the prisoners, our moments of prayer, and our support to, of pastors, can effectively contribute to it. So let us pray to God that our churches and bodies may reflect the sacredness of God's dwelling place, which is full of love and tenderness now and forever. Amen.